Welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly D&D 5th edition actual play campaign. I'm Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer slash fiend-packed warlock, talking to demons. And we're joined here by our very good friends. Jill the Night is playing Veosenia, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. And Joe O'Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, the human battlemaster. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome to our YouTube channel. We cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs here. And we also have our campaign that we play. Um, and so be sure to subscribe to the channel for much, much more. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings for the premiere of the episodes of the campaign, which happen at 6 p.m. Eastern time right here on YouTube. So join us for the premiere if you can. It's also available as a podcast if that's more your jam. And with that, let us return to the world of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs Mages and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Pluto, Veo, and Sebastian were exploring the dungeons of Nox, mm -hmm. where Sebastian found a summoning circle and mm -hmm. conjured up a demon lord known as the Whispered Promise. Oh. The three of you have been speaking with this enigmatic entity who offers your heart's desires. Sebastian being offered the opportunity to perhaps bring Mouse in body out of the abyss. Veo being offered perhaps a way of saving her father. And Pluto being offered a laundry list of just cool magic items to take over the, the world. world with. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a very important question though. Um, to me, it appeared as Pluto Jackson. You, so you, you know, and Pluto is what you most desire. Yeah, Pluto Jackson, no shirt on. Yeah. To you, it appeared as <laughs> a drift globe. What did it appear to to Vale? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a sandwich, a giant sandwich. No, like probably my dad. Yeah. Yeah, as he wants, as I remember him. Yeah, now I feel like, I mean, yours is a drift globe. So. Mine's a big joke. <laughs> uh, I mean, in actuality, no, it was probably my it, wife. It was probably my wife. I, I, what? I think that actually <laughs> this again? the 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 actual thing that you're speaking to below Jackson now is an idealized version of yourself. I like the idea of the mirrored version. Yeah. Uh, can you describe that again? So what you speak to is a much older version of Pluto, mm. perhaps one that approaches the age of your of Pluto's own father, and this image of Pluto wears a ornate suit of plate armor, wears a helm. Uh, um, the whole armor is bedecked in black armor with a golden sigil of your house covered in rubies and diamonds, bearing a demonic blade, and you sit upon a throne that marks you as emperor of the world. Oh, and there's a skeleton dragon. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's, there's a dragon as well. That that is that is your friend, I, your your best friend in fact, <gasps> and loyal companion. So your wife's back. You have a new best friend, Dragon. Mine probably changes. I'm just gonna throw this out there. Jokes aside, it started as Pluto, but as I started to make my demands, I imagine that it actually turned into Mouse. I also sort of imagine. I mean, this is my visual interpretation, but that it's sort of like this. You know when like you can't, it's something that you can't quite focus on. And so it's almost like this thing that's constantly shifting yeah. and sort of like changing. And you, 
what you see is never the, 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 the creature's true form, but it constantly shapes itself to those you things Representing that the ways in which humans never truly know what they want. I, I feel like it looks <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like... The quest to know oneself is life's pursuit. Mm. It looks like you're looking at a dream. As is conquering the world. In the moment <laughs> that you're Secondary waking up. Too. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking at a dream in the moment that you're waking up. Yeah, and you're seeing it somewhere and then it fades. So the whispered promise says to you, Pluto Jackson, gesturing, and I, I should say, none of you can hear each other's conversations. Mm -hmm. And as, if you look towards your companions, they kind of stand transfixed. Um, and what Pluto, you imagine seeing is the whispered promise gestures to one of the, one of the sarcophagi and it rolls open. And the sarcophagi says, lay to rest. Oh, sorry, the, the whispered promise says, lay to rest that weak-willed version of yourself. Become the adventurer, the conqueror, the king that you are meant to be. Enter, enter here and you will give to me the blade Ignatius, and the shield. I will also take the helm mm -hmm. from wherever it is in the, the universe, as well as your armor. Mm -hmm. I will replace these. I will I will equip you with new armor and a new helm. And I cannot give you Saint Tarnus Bane, but I can give you everything you will need to seize this fell and legendary blade. What's the, uh, what's the catch? None. I, it is a simple trade. I will take the, the, the holy relics. You I wish will take to, the holy relics. You wish to take the holy relics. Yes. And I will replace them with a new helm, a new suit of armor, and I will well, I cannot give you St. Tarnas Bane, for it is not in my power to give it to you. I do know where I can tell you exactly where in the Dungeons of Nox it lies, and I can reveal to you the secret knowledge that you will need to seize this blade. And the Drift Globe? I cannot replace your Drift Globe. However, <gasps> however <laughs> I can give you something better that will help you seize Tarna's Bane, but know that it is a terrible power to wield. As in, it is terribly powerful. <laughs> okay, because when you first said it, it sounded like it would be really- No, it's an, ama it's an amazing, it is, I will give you an amulet that will allow you to control the deadliest weapon the Sorcerer Kings ever created. Destructive power like you have never seen. Very annihilation itself. Concentrated and at your command. All I want. Everything I want. You're just going to give it to me. Yes. If you accept this deal, if you climb into this sarcophagus, yeah. you will be furnished with all that you require all that you desire. And that's all I have to do. That is... You'll just give it to me. I, w I will give it to you. You've just met me. Yep. And you'll give me everything I've ever wanted. Yes. All right. I don't go to the sarcophagus. I... I kind of look around. I... I walk up to Sebastian, and I'm gonna to touch him on the shoulder. Do I notice Pluto there? Do you wanna to talk to Sebastian? I'm gonna to try to talk to Sebastian. Okay. Give me a wisdom saving throw. I get a 23. You feel like you are able to, you realize that you are in a bit of an illusion. It's a level of reality on top of itself. 
Because there's like me standing in front of me. But within that, you were able to, to step out and you touch Sebastian and, and that snaps him out for, for a moment. We need to go. We have not found the infinite corridor. This is not the one we're looking for. Well, I know. I was just seeing what was in here. Okay. Where's Veo? Veo is also transfixed. I'm gonna go look for her in the. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She's, yep. yeah we have no idea where she is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Do a circle around it. Let's. Yeah, let's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Some bypasses passes and you find Veo. Oh, right, right, yeah. You stretch your arms out. Wait till you hit a cat. Something furry. We find Veo. We poke her. I think in this moment, Pluto realizes that everything he's had to work for has taken killing a bunch of people, letting a bunch of people die, hard choices, sacrifice. Every muscle on his body is work. Every slice in his armor, every loss. The fact that this person, this thing was willing to give it to him so easily was his indication that it was wrong. Mm. He needs to suffer for it. That's what Ignatius has taught him. That's what he's learned. He needs to suffer for his reward. That's what he's doing now. And you hear the voice say, so you wish to suffer (laughs) for what you want. Oh, did I say this all out loud? Yeah, man, you're just literally... And you feel the field come back. <clears throat> you feel like you must earn what you have desired. What a lovely man you are, a true enigma. Tell me where that sword is. If you wish to suffer and feel like you have earned what you have, I can give that to you too. It, but if you wish to know, but wouldn't you like to know, even in the back of your mind, that all that suffering was not for nothing, that it was a purpose, that it wa- that you didn't suffer and bleed only to fail, that all that pain and blood was shed in vain to end up in a place utter despair with nothing to show for it. If you wish to suffer, if you wish to bleed, if you wish to earn, I will make you suffer. I will make you bleed. And you will earn the destiny you see before you. It will not be easy. It will be difficult. There will be pain, but you will have power. Shouldn't have said any of that. I just wanted to make myself look better than everybody. It was, uh, had I realized self-righteous that you did not want to be spared the pain, (laughs) the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, I would have led with that. You truly are a fascinating creature. I will tell you where St. Tarna's Bane is. Where is it? If you take the deal. And you will, you will earn that blade. You will prove yourself worthy of wielding the doom of angels. The armor, the sword, that shield, you have already suffered the pain and the trials and tribulations of laboring under their yoke. Bearing that blade has been a burden one which I can free you from, so you can unleash the hero that you have always been. And yet, what is a hero without their sacrifices? 
and the destiny that I can offer you is not one that will be without them. There will be many more trials and tribulations to come, but they will be the kind you can meet with your blade and your brawn rather than useless moralizing. What would why Sebastian do, you, do? Why do you fetter yourself? Why? What would Sebastian do in this scenario? Why do you dilute all your wonderful potential worrying about who or what or whether it is right? You know in your heart of hearts that might makes right. And that you have the power. You do not need to do what is right. It is right because you do it. I want to approach the cage. And I start jamming on the buttons. I'm starting to like just <laughs> eat, 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 eat. And I'm trying to send it back. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna dial the I'm trying to find the hang up <laughs> button on the demon phone. And what about the two of you? Are you gonna hang up on the demon phone? It's so tempting. <laughs> <laughs> it just starts punching. Yeah. I mean, they gave me their number if I need them. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, you got demon number. As. If you change your mind, just, you know how to find me. Climb in the sarcophagus. No. I'm on the edge of every whisper. One with so much power and potential such as yourself is not one whose number I'll lose very soon. Call me anytime. All it takes They're gone? Yeah. We have to, we have to find Mr. Knight. This place is, uh, it's unnatural. It's not, it's not good down here. I know, I know you're doing okay. Yeah, but, but this place, this is, place obviously isn't good. It's just not, uh, I don't know, Veo, I, I'm, it's starting to get to me. I don't know how much... I don't think I can spend a long time in the shadows. I want to apologize for that. Um, I'm a I big just, vitamin D guy. I really <laughs> wanted to see what was on the other end of the phone line. And now we know. Um, was anyone else offered, like... Wait, did it offer you something? I thought it was just talking to me. It offered me everything I want. Yeah. Everything. And what do you guys want? What I've wanted this whole time, Sebastian, is to free my dad. Yeah. Why do you think I'm doing any of this? Oh, you don't need a demon for that. We already know how we're going to do that. That's fine. That's why I said no, because I already have a hope and a way. And I think through my friends and through Wilhelm and what we're trying to achieve here, I'm going to get that. But it, yeah. it could have been so easy. The demon and offered me... Huh. As you say those words, you just feel that voice in the back of your head saying, if it was so easy, why haven't you done it yet? It offered me a way to get a mouse back, but I, I've already put the plans in motion. I already am working on that. So, so again, no, easy answer. Have you really been working on it? Couldn't you have done it by now with all your power? I'm not powerful enough yet, but I'm going to be. Pluto, what, what, did, what did it offer you? It offered to let me conquer the world. Oh yeah, we don't, we, there's no way we can do that without a demon's help. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, none of you can do what it can give me. Wait, what, you, your deepest desire is to conquer the world? Because if I'm in charge, then I can protect the ones that I care about. Pluto. And keep away the bad. No, I'm the evil one in this party. Wait, dial that back. <laughs> I'm the one who makes bad decisions in this party. 
Why do you only get to make bad decisions? Conquering the world? That doesn't... No. You're a, you're a hero. You're my light. Why do I have to do other people's bidding? I should be the one running the show. That... I know what needs to be done. Pluto, if you... I felt safe going down the path I've gone on because I knew that you would always be there to keep me balanced. But so if, that's my job, is to just be the balance for you. I don't get to live out my No, destiny. you're right. Exactly. Why can't you be the one that you were always meant to be? Why do you always have to live in the shadow of a shadow? And this is why I can't be down here. I'm Pluto, what if we do it together? What if we take over the world? <laughs> You have like no idea. And why do you no always idea. pick him to take over the world? Vero's very capable. She, she you, directs. you're like the nicest person. You have the highest morals out of any. Wait, I'm not nice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the three of us can take over the world. Look, all I'm saying is that the next time you see a demon phone, stop dialing, because I don't think I, I can, can't. I don't know. I don't know how. <laughs> Okay, all I'm saying is that I can resist, and I can resist, and I can resist until I can't. I see a demon phone, I dial a demon phone. It's just how it goes. I don't know. I don't know how much I have in me. I needed to know what was on the other end. Didn't you guys need to know what was on the other end? No, and now it's stuck in my head. It's still, it's still whispered that the line didn't disconnect. Okay, what, what was the bad part about you getting everything you needed to conquer the world? What was the downside? I don't look good in black. <laughs> I just <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, just it just doesn't you know, it just feels too simple for me. I need something I mean, more elegant. We can't Dress the same. Like I'm that. in purple, blue, silver, gold. Like I'm, I'm really feeling it. Uh, it's, it, it seemed mean, like there was a lot of death there. Color was the only thing wrong, and you <laughs> see the mental image of like. <laughs> it's everything. It's everything I want, and I know it. And and the the thing is, is like, you know, I, if it's you can, you only make one last mistake. Wait, what are you trying to say? <laughs> oh, so, making a deal with a demon. It's the last mistake you'll ever make, and what a terrible thing to do. You know, Mr. I, High Road no, Pluto no, Jackson? No, you, you world are, conquering, <laughs> I'm better than you, Pluto Jackson. I'm going to remember this. I don't. I didn't say that you made a last mistake. I'm just saying that my... I don't know when my last mistake is, and I don't... And I, and I don't know when it is. It's just... My gut tells me that this would be it. Yeah, okay, nobody took the deal from the demons. Let's go, High Roaders. Let's 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 be better than Sebastian. You, you were gonna do two. You were, you were on your second. I'm not gonna demon lie. Deal. The only reason why I turned it down is because I was starting to get confused on who I owed what. <laughs> and it was getting complicated and I decided You have you to know, double your I only, got, I only got room for one demonic relationship in my life. Yep, yep, yep. Just one. <laughs> Singular focus kind of guy, that's you know. A, that's 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 wisdom right there. I put my plus zero. Did you just point at my plus zero yeah. to wisdom? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think you're right, Pluto. I I don't think we can stay down here. No, right. and I and and I think it's gonna get worse before it gets better. So we have to find this endless corridor. We have to find. Uh, what's his Mr. name? Mr. Mr. Knight. Knight. We have to find Mr. Knight and. If we happen to stumble across a blade made of demons or an angel killing thing, we steal it. Yeah, if we can. We don't know how. I mean, we can figure it out. True. All right. Everybody's cool. Everybody's great. Everybody feels positive and happy. And I just need a minute to come down from that. Uh, I saw myself on a really cool throne. And... I saw you too. <laughs> it was weird. So we both, so we all saw Pluto. We all, it was, she was what? just, the, the thing was just Pluto. I mean, uh, oh, he's right, right there. No, like in the cage? Oh, no, no, no. No. No, I saw my dad. Oh, okay, so we saw Pluto. Yeah. So it was mostly Pluto, a bit of your dad. Got it. All right. 
That's established. Desires. Departing the Chamber of the Whispering Promise, the one corridor leads off this room. Yeah, we, yeah, I, I think we're gone. Right, we're leaving the room, yeah. Yeah, and we're trying to find mm. the infinite corridor. I said endless earlier, and I'm sorry, it's infinite. Okay. Those are different. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Proceeding down the hallway, you continue through a series of ruinous passages formed by, as, as much as you can tell, these passages represent the few areas where, in many cases, buildings that would have been crushed under rock and stone, their walls buckled in and prevented further wreckage and rubble from falling and filling what was once a street or a building. And so proceeding from passageway to passageway along what it what is a rather serpentine path, Veo, vale, you're able to do your best whenever you run into a fork in the road to help navigate the group. But give me, um, between the three of you, I need some combination of survival, investigation, and perception. I can do survival. I'll take investigation. Perception. Okay. 32. 26. 8. Okay. Pluto is no help. <laughs> but <laughs> Sebastian and Veo, the two, the two of you are able to ascertain which of these maze-like passages are the best ways to continue at least on the closest beeline to where the Cathedral of St. Tarana is. Oftentimes down these passageways, you'll realize that it, it's veering ve further and further off target and then you'll find another turn so you'll turn mostly back and in and sometimes you run into some dead ends um and you have to double back so um the the time that passes as you navigate through these halls about three hours of of moving from the these rough sort of ruinous catacombs. All of you can roll me a d6 as well. Can I also ask, just just for, doesn't have to be hard, two. Five. Three. Okay. And how far is like by the crow flies from St. Tarna to the cathedral that we originally By saw? the crow flies. Is it very close, like it, geographically? Like, like are they it, in the same side of the city? Or yes, they... because the, the, the city of Lumen as a pre-industrial city. It's it's not like, you know, it, it is one of the largest cities in the world, but at this time, time like the large, it, it's still a population of only a couple hundred thousand people, not in the millions, right? At some points in history, Knox did have a population in the millions. Wow. Well. Um, but Lumen has never been a city that had millions of inhabitants living in it, right? The buildings that you are passing through here are very different from the buildings that currently exist in the city as it, as it stands today, because they there are even in cases like the, in the, under the rule of the Sorcerer Kings, they built basically the equivalent of tenement buildings, um, almost like apartment buildings where the masses of people who labored under the yoke of their tyranny were stuffed into small and cramped living quarters. And that's kind of where, where what you start passing through in, in certain, certain parts of these is like buildings where as you go, go through them, you're like, this is a small chamber only to realize this isn't a tomb, this was a bedchamber and you pass by areas where clearly under some sort of ancient cataclysm, hundreds of people were buried alive in these collapsing buildings. Um, so it's not weird that we're traveling for a few hours and we haven't quite found where we're going. No, because 
Because like a you said, bird would be able to fly across the ta- like like the the modern city of Lumen is still only a couple square miles in its area, right? So if you were able to simply walk from one side of Lumen, like if there was no buildings there and it was just flat, you walk you could walk from one side of the city to the other in only like an hour if if that, right? But the fact that there's buildings and crowds and everything like that makes that not possible. But what you are doing is navigating underground tunnels that do not proceed in a straight path. Yeah. So we're still good. Right, and you are also actively searching for your your way for like your yeah. way forward and trying to, to maintain your bearings. As f- so much as you can hope, yes. Okay. I still um, feel confident. Is what I'm saying. I have this mental image of like a montage of you and I like at corners like pointing and like talking and in the back of it you just see Pluto tripping. And... <laughs> <laughs> now, meanwhile, the darkness is all around you and you see the flittering shadows of night creatures once in a while and sometimes you do opt to take the pathway where you hear fewer screams and howls from Mm -hmm. some dark pit in the darkness. Mm -hmm. But then you begin to feel a warmth, a heat, something in the shadows that is hot. Guys. Heat? Light is hot, fire hot, heat. I don't feel much. <laughs> In general. But. I mean, the, the, he said something about light. Well, you, about heat. you know what they say. Mm. Getting warmer. Oh, like the right, yeah. The right direction you're uh, getting, yeah. Getting warmer. Yeah. So maybe literally. Maybe. We have nothing else to go on here. As long as we're moving in a direction that feels like we're still, you, you, we're our bearing, like you and I have been working together on the bearings. Yes. So if the bearings are moving us towards warmth, I'm gonna take that. It's our only guess that that's a sign that we're getting closer to the the warm center of this, where 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 old man night is going to be. Maybe Mr. Seven Cloaks lives at the end of an endless warm corridor. <laughs> well, something to, different to investigate anyways, at least. Yeah. If anything. And Dragon's Breath is also warm. Oh. No. Oh. You just had to make this bad. <laughs> just making it real. <laughs> I don't know where we are. I can't see you. I can feel you, but I can't see you. I don't know if a dragon fits down here, but we'll find out. Yep. Onward. You Go. point. No, nobody notices. <laughs> no, no one can see. Uh, eventually, you come to a chamber where there are great statues placed representing the Sorcerer Kings. The buildings. It is a, a it is a chamber that again, like all here, is formed by the volcanic material and the earth above, kind of being supported by what would have been two collapsing buildings. What you realize is that the, these two collapsing buildings on either side might have been, and the doorway that you move through might have once been a grand gatehouse of some kind some sort of fortress at the beginning of uh, the opening of a keep. For ahead of you is a great bridge. And oddly enough, there is light shining up from beneath the stone span of whatever the stone span is crossing and you hear the sound of rushing liquid. The shadows almost 
congeal over the bridge. Much in the same way as we talked about oil and water. It's almost like the light is oil and the water is rest. It, 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 that's the way it goes. The water rests on the oil or the w oil rests oh. on the water. Oil the is oil on is on top? Oil is so. on top? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like the oil resting on top of the water. Yeah. Mm. Um, and you see the darkness, the way that it just, it's almost like the bottom of the darkness in the way that it coils and shifts is reflecting whatever the liquid is doing on its surface. It's, a, it's like a mirror. Hmm. How close are we to this bridge? Well. And are the statues, like, is this a separate, like, is it like statues across this bridge? The bridge itself spans perhaps a hundred feet. Um, not much more. And it leads to another opening that is not, again, unlike the entrance to a fortress. Nothing about this kind of screams eternal or uh, endless or uh, infinite mm -hmm. corridor. Did uh, we go the wrong way? I don't know. I mean, by everything we can tell, we're heading in this right direction to reach. We're looking for, right now we're, we're trying to head to St. Tarna. Yeah. But Veo, your dream had some pretty specific. Past the infinite corridor. Now, just because we're at a bridge doesn't mean that we don't keep going to reach exactly. the infinite corridor. Exactly. Yes, the bridge leads to another building. Um, yeah. A yeah. building seems like a, the facade of the, the building is an obsidian fortress imposing in its majesty and almost elements of its construction remind you of the inscrutable tower. In my conversations with my mom in the Shadowlands, did we not talk about the inscrutable tower a little bit? Sebastian, give me an arcana check with advantage. Uh, 27. Your memory of your time in the Shadowlands is understandably hazy, but you seem to recall something about your mother mentioning that the inscrutable tower was in fact constructed by the Sorcerer Kings. And the architectural style you are seeing in the stonework here is very reminiscent of it, of its construction. I think we're going the right way. Yeah. I have a feeling. I feel like we could have gone other ways, but it wouldn't have led us in the direction that we would have needed to go. If there is a place where a guy called Old Man Knight is residing in the dungeons of Nox, a bridge over light into um, the possible remains of the old Sorcerer Nox King's Tower fortress. Yeah, that's what this is. Looks looks like it could be. Uh, so my assumption is that's. That's a great place to keep mm. a... It's either full of horrible monsters or it's where Old Man... Hey, give me a survival or nature check. Uh, 24. Getting your bearings, if you're guessing properly, this is a bridge and the Vita River runs through Lumen. The Vita River runs right by the Cathedral of St. Tarna as well. And so if this is a buried version of Lumen up above, crossing some kind of bridge or river on your way to getting to where the Cathedral of St. Tarn is might not be unexpected because nice. the river could have changed its course over, over the centuries, the river, like, as it's built over and rebuilt over. So there, it's, in, it's uh, it could it be entirely possible that in a buried version of the city, there is an old, pathway where the river used to run through. Okay. And this, that you would encounter bridges. This makes sense. I think this is the way we go. Just based on what might have changed, based on what we have seen above, this seems like the way to go. I say we push on. Lead us, Veo. And I'm right beside you. You grab a rock. And I... 
inches forward as we That's go. Oh, okay. So. Okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> in the construction of this chamber as well, there are several braziers that are set throughout the chamber. And the best thing that I can say is in the braziers burning is dark fire. It is, they are shimmering flames of night with a silver lining to them that do not cast light at all. Um, but rather, these shimmering flames seem to be holding, like being, helping to support the darkness that is enveloping this, this chamber. Um, and so, yes, there are the, the massive carvings of ancient sorcerer kings and their figures, and then the bridge spanning across. So as you approach and cross the room, you can start to see that the bridge spans over a deep, deep chasm, approximately 150 feet below you. There is a river that is emanating the light that reaches up into this chamber that the darkness is reflecting over. The darkness basically forms a barrier that the light does not rise above. It just illuminates the underside of the bridge. And what you see below you is a burning river of blood. Mm -hmm. <gasps> what? Hot, bubbling, flowing blood. Is that lava? Nope. Mm -hmm. no, the not. chamber here snakes down, curving out of sight and in in, in as it as it we weaves around, um, and it, extending far out in either either direction. Cause I'm hot -blooded, like in the <laughs> <laughs> and I start walking towards the bridge, humming. <clears throat> Okay. You're going for, I guess it's, this is illuminated, so you can actually leave if you want. I stand on the edge. So the top side of the bridge is actually not illuminated. The light basically ends just as it touches the underside of the bridge, but not the uh, top side of the bridge. Hmm. And there's no sides on the, this it, it is a stone bridge that spans across it um, that has no railings. But with the illumination, Pluto would be able to tell where the edges of the yes. bridge are. Yeah. Yes. I think we should go together. Well, we'll be right behind you. Yeah. Unless you want one of us to go first. I just want to hold hands. Okay. The ceiling is about 120 feet overhead here as well. It op opens up. And then this is the front facade of the imposing fortress. Man, don't you have a grappling gun? Yes. Could you shoot it across? Veo, don't there. you have a flying carpet? Yes. <laughs> cool. I have all these things. We have a lot of tools. You also, the reason I want to hold really close to Veo is that uh, Veo knows how to make us fall slower. But yes, yes. How much weight can the flying carpet hold? Oh. How's Casper doing, by the way? Have you checked in on him lately? He's still scared. Yeah. Well, kind don't tell him. We won't tell him where we are. Uh, That's just regular lava. We're not underneath in the darkness. 400 pounds? 400 pounds, so everybody but Pluto. He's coming after me. <laughs> my way. You're wearing a lot of armor. You just wait till I get my black armor and kill everyone. What? what? <laughs> Sorry, did I say that out loud again? Uh, my, also, my grappling hook, I think, only goes 30 feet? I believe so. Yeah, grapple shot, 30 feet. If, and only unworked stone. This is worked. If you don't want to use Casper, can I borrow Casper? What do you mean? Together what we are you going to do with them? Together we could go across, across on Casper. Or Casper could ferry us one at a time. I like or we could just walk across. We're really afraid it's of the bridge. It's just a bridge. It's okay, just a bridge, right? Let's just walk. Let's just you walk. guys know something I don't. It's a bridge over boiling blood. I, I, would, I, would, I would be lying if I said I wasn't concerned. Uh, I don't know what um, the Sorcerer Kings, uh, what kind of standards they had in, you know, for safety. Mm. Um, I mean, there's no railings, so. Yeah, yeah. already just. 
Okay, Veo. Vale. I'll hang on to Casper and you go ahead across the bridge. Or maybe you should, you know, I just, just want to remind us all that we have a flying carpet in case of emergency, okay? That's just, it's out there, we know it. Let's go ahead. Okay, let's bring, we can bring Casper out, it's fine. Casper! How far, how, Is he how? so far to, <laughs> fearful to, to fly? We got him over that, I think. Yeah, Casper's good to fly. Could, uh, how far across is the bridge? How many feet? Um, so are, are we gonna go by this scale or yeah, is it like yeah, a big it's, scale? Yeah, it's about that scale, yeah. It's like 70, 80 feet. We could do, we could also tie some rope off. I would, I would, can, so wait, between the two of you, Casper couldn't hold both of you? I think so. I'm like two and change. You're, you're scrawny. You're only 200 pounds? Ish. With all your armor? Okay, maybe like closing in on three. Hmm. Okay. I'm like 150, 160, especially now. I lost a lot of weight when what? my soul <laughs> left. <laughs> can you, if if something happens, can you get back on this bridge magically? Yeah. Can you? No. Okay, you get Casper. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to ride Casper. I have at least okay. two different ways I can get back on yeah, this Yeah, that's bridge. why I'm sticking near you. I think we all go together as a family. As you step towards the bridge oh. and yeah. the... Your dark visions are all like 60 feet or so. 90. 90? Okay. Um, 10. I believe mine is actually okay. 120. 120, yeah. And see that there are a pair of what look like spiked iron doors that are here on the bridge. But as you come closer, you realize that the doors, they're almost 40 feet tall. And they move slightly. Oh. And as you approach the bridge, the doors begin to open slowly. And behind the doors is a colossal armored skeleton with burning eyes clad in dark plate armor. Oh no! Oh man. And he's the door? <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Hmm. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that was the loudest gulp I've ever heard <laughs> from you. And I felt because I felt the same energy. The door oh. opens. You see it start to open and close the the massive plates of the door. And you see something emanating. Just this ripple. Sebastian, you you sense it most of all mm. around the shields. Give me an Arcana check. 24. The shields are emitting a magic dampening field. Oh, no. I, I grab Veo. Uh, spells aren't going to work. It, do I sense that it's in the immediate vicinity of the shields? It is emanating from the shields. How far? Like, do I feel dampened where I am? No, not at this side of the bridge. Shoot it. If we get close, we're not going to be able to use magic. Oh. Would that affect a flying carpet? With your arcana check result, the effect that you sense, it is potentially, it, it is effectively an anti-magic field that is emanating from the shields. And so, yes, it would cause magic items to cease functioning when in range of the shields. I have an idea. I, I take Casper and I roll him back up. I'm like, yeah, you're, sorry, okay. you're okay, you're okay, buddy. You're okay. You tried. I, um, I'm going to talk to you about that. Yeah. What's your range on your mage hand, Veo? Oh, uh, it's long, right? 30 feet. Yeah, that's it. I don't think it's anything. It's Is invisible. It special? Is it Because uh, I was going to say, see if you can reach out and see when the mage hand fails. I mean, to get a sense of like how far. I'll reach it out 30 feet. It reach, reaching out 30 feet from you. Yeah. 
From where you're standing, the mage hand persists until the end of its range. Okay. Can I ask a question? I'm actually, are these open? Yes. I'm going to step over here. What is the integrity of this bridge? Are you proficient with any sort of engineering tools or knowledge of that regard? Oh, I am. Pluto. Come here. Yeah, get my eyes on this. Uh, proficient in Mason's tools. I don't know if you remember, but I used to be a Mason. I did remember, and that's why I'm calling you over. Um, <laughs> this this pillar here in mm-hmm. the center of the bridge. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How hard would we have to hit it to collapse this bridge? Pretty hard. Like that's a pretty that's a pretty dense stone pillar. Any together? Like an you would need like an explosion. Any um, an explosion? You say. <laughs> Any weaknesses? Any a like old explosion. crumbling? Give me a perception check. Both of us, or can just, I help him? Just you. Does he help? Yeah, me? you can have have advantage on the check. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Uh, Sixteen. Rock. The pillar and the bridge in its construction could probably withstand several hundred points of damage. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You you need to deal. Uh, over a hundred points of damage to a section of the bridge and to the main pillar. Um, I'm going to say that that main pillar, like to break it, to break it through, probably about 300 hit points. Wow. Okay, next test. Just before we go forward, it's good to test this. I'm, I'm going to open Oh, I have up. an idea. Crowley's fluttering out. What? Yeah. Each of you can roll me a d6. Mm. Six. Five. Four. Okay. Uh, Crowley flutters out and flies across the bridge. At the... Oh yeah, because Crowley is a summon creature. Mm-hmm. So, summon creatures, but man- magically anim... So, creatures that are animated by a spell wink out in an anti-magic field or summoned by a spell, but creature, but magical creatures that have brought been brought into the plane or constructs or undead, they are not harmed. Like, they don't wink out by an anti-magic field. So Crowley, as a magic, as a creature that is summoned through Find Familiar, uh, when Crowley gets uh, 30 feet from the figure, Crowley wakes out. All right, bye Crowley. That was, that was exactly what I was gonna test. Good job. Yeah, cool. So we know it's about 30 foot anti-magic field. Go get him, Pluto. <laughs> I got you. If I stay back here and you fall, I can like catch you. Ahoy there! How do you catch him? Hmm. What? Teleport, dimension door. Uh... Ahoy there! Mm. Pluto, looking closer, give me a perception check. Uh, 24. You realize that although there is a skeleton inside the plate armor, the skeleton is an animate. It is the armor itself that oh. is the constructed creature. Mm. The skeleton's just like like it's almost like reverse wearing. Yeah, the like, armor is wearing the skeleton. The skeleton isn't wearing the armor. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this creature that you see is likely akin to an iron golem. Mm. Mm. Interesting. What to do? <laughs> uh. Instead of breaking the bridge, could we could we lure it out into the bridge? Well, my original plan was we were going to lure it out and then explode the bridge. Well, we could just push it off the edge. There's no hand railings. There's zero safety mechanisms on this bridge to prevent falling. What if we just get behind it? Can't you just teleport us behind it? As long as it's, you'd have to, can you yeah. teleport more than 60 feet? Yes. Right, because it's 30 on each side. Can we just appear behind the skeleton and then engage it? Yes. Maybe push it back. Unless there's something preventing that teleportation. As long as I'm not within 30 feet of it, I can. So we draw it out onto the bridge. I can teleport me and one other person. Okay. I hate to be this guy, but does it make sense that Pluto draws it out? 
and Veo and I teleport behind it and attack it from behind. If we are on either side of it, you can only face one way with those giant shields. I know. <laughs> I'm the only person that has zero safety measures against falling off a bridge. I gave you a magic carpet. <laughs> That's useless. <laughs> All right, I go back to the old rope around the belly trick. <laughs> there, see, you have lots of safety measures. Oh, you know what? Boy. No, no, no. Take Pluto. Are you sure? Yes, and then if we can damage it once it's done, then I'll just come across. Yeah. And if I fall, I fall. Bloody river. I look down, there's some rocks floating down there. You can grappling hook back Grab it. I can, as long as I'm not within 30 feet of it, I can misty step up. If you, but even if you are within 30 feet of it, you have a grappling hook. All right, take me with you. Okay, well first we draw it out. Oh, okay, I, I, I'm gonna start walking onto the bridge. Okay. And I... As you walk onto the yeah, bridge, yeah. I'm gonna come there's a hide. crash as the doors get like crashed together with a chong 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 and I do and I, re I respond hitting my sword and my shield and together. like you can see how the, how the, this creature is wielding the two doors like shields like a scoop and then it just sort of drives them into like a bulldozer sort of position and it begins approaching forward roll for initiative Ooh. right to it oh no Ooh. oh no <laughs> Well, Pluto, hopefully we aren't in the anti-magic field. Pluto? Three. Okay. <laughs> Don't laugh. Veil? Oh, 30. <laughs> you had 10 times my initiative. Sebastian. 11. 18 plus 12, yeah. You had 10 times my initiative. How did you get that? 18 plus 12. Gosh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. righty. So this, this creature, is the Iron Dreadnought. Right. Veo, you are first to act. All right, well, I'm gonna try to give you all cover by shooting at this thing. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know what else to do. Um, and I'm kind of high AC. behind the thing, so I'm gonna use steady aim. Okay. And stay there, hold my ground. First in my life. Are your arrows magical? Or my bow you, is magical. Okay. You fire your arrows at this creature. As they contact the anti-magic field, the arrows are stripped of their magic, thus becoming mundane. And they strike the iron golem. As an iron golem, it is immune to fire, poison, psychic, bludgeoning, and piercing slashing damage from non-magical attacks that are not made of adamantium. So because of its, so I hope you guys brought adamantium weapons, because that is the only way that you can harm it. <laughs> Funny enough, my armor is made of adamantium, so I can just beat it to death with my helmet. <laughs> Chest bone. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna run into it. Oh yeah. God. Okay. So yeah, you, your okay. arrows, you fire your arrows at it, and, uh, and arrows, they do the, the arrows hit. It's just immune to the damage that you deal because it is an iron golem in an anti magic field. Good start, on a bridge good over lava. And uh, <laughs> blood, blood, boiling blood. Uh, on, a board, uh, on a bridge over uh, over a river of boiling blood. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um. <laughs> I whisper, help, help. Demon, help me. I'll give you everything. <laughs> really? No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It was jokes. Little I jokes. could get you what you need. Would you like me to transform your armor into an adamantium weapon? No, 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 oh, no. Too bad. <laughs> this will be fun. I have a question. This bridge, is it, it's work stone. I have a climbing speed. Would I be able to climb on it? Uh, on the sides, yes, but upside down on the bottom, I'll need an athletics check. Uh, okay, so yeah, I kind of came out from the pillar, took my shots. They do nothing! I kind of go back behind the pillar. He's huge, right? Yes. Okay, great. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, he is. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it for me. Sebastian, it's your turn. I'm going to run up next to Pluto, put my hand on his shoulder, try to, like, 
I, I don't need line of sight, but just for safety, I'm trying to catch a glimpse past the Dreadnought, and I'm gonna Dimension Door us. Okay. Right over here. All right. Give me a Charisma saving throw. Okay, no problem. No, no worries. It's gonna be a 23. Okay. Something is intercepting your teleportation spell. The spell is not expended, but it, it. But you got the sense that as you were casting the spell, something in this room grabbed hold of the spell and tried to redirect your teleportation destination to over the river. Mm. And so the spell fails. You stay exactly where you are. The spell slot is not expended, um, but you do not move from that space. So I run up next to you, and I'm like, you ready? Yeah. Still ready. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> and yeah, that's my turn. Okay. The Dreadnought. Chunk, 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 chunk. Boof. No! Oh, I thought as it started, I was like, oh, this isn't a problem. It's not even that bad. Yeah, so you go to teleport, and you're like, and it's starting to charge at you, and you think, oh, this is going to be so smart. I'm going to teleport us away from this. And yeah, no. Any minute now. Yeah. You Any hear a whimpering, now. Pluto? So I need both of you to make a strength saving throw. 16. 17. You both fail. Indomitable. 19. You both fail. Lucky. Where are we going? You are both going to take 36 points of bludgeoning damage mm -hmm. as the shield drive into you. And then as the shield contacts you, the creature opens the shields up and shoves you both off the bridge. Oh! <laughs> you are both sent flying off the bridge. Uh, you can both make dexterity saving throws to catch yourselves before you fall. 24. Okay. Uh, 15. You both manage to catch yourselves, and so you are... Oh, man. Uh, do you both want to... Do you, you can both go off the same side or different sides? I imagine it's different sides thematically. Yeah, okay. for, for thematic reasons, I'm agreeing. <laughs> I imagine we're both just like now hanging on. I'm really caught off guard because I thought we were going to teleport. Yeah. And I usually, I have to close my eyes and brace myself when you teleport me. Yeah. So yeah. you close your eyes and then you open them just to see a shield. <laughs> you hear me go, Pluto, Pluto, and then you open your eyes. So that wasn't the anti-magic field. That was something else that's also stopping magic? Uh, something that appears to be blocking teleportation. Kind of like an inscrutable tower. That's my guess. Yeah. Based on your cool, knowledge. Cool, 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 Great. This is... All right. We're learning. This is a learning moment. <laughs> <laughs> that blood is boiling. So is mine, Pluto. So is mine. Pluto, it is your turn. Um, I want to climb up. You climb back up. Now, because on... it's a huge creature, mm -hmm. can I move through its space? Yes, treating it as difficult ground. Okay. Uh, how much movement does it take to get back? It costs half your movement to climb back onto the bridge. So that's because of mobile. So in order 20. to get through the huge creature's space, to get from one side to the other costs 40 feet of movement. Through its whole space? Yeah. Yeah, you need at least 40 feet of movement to get, get from one side to the other. Technically 35. Right, yeah. Including me climbing up, or that's just the movement? It that's costs just... half your movement just to to, to yeah. scamper back up. Because yeah. you're effectively, you, I, I ruled it that you're yeah. effectively knock prone. prone. Right, yeah. okay. Uh, okay, then I'm going to, <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to action surge. Okay. Dash. Okay. And I don't lose movement through difficult terrain. Um, because of mobile. In this case, because you're still moving through a creature. You're gonna count it? I'm gonna count it. But that's still, you know what? Yeah. It's still gonna give me enough. 
Um, and it will make an opportunity attack for you as you oh, move through Oh, you know what then? Space. Actually then, this, this is what I'm gonna do first because I don't want it to. I wanna attack it, I wanna hit it with a 26 as I go through it. Do you have the actions to do that? Uh, action surge. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm gonna action surge dash. Okay, so yeah, so then so, you, sorry, you yeah, would have so 45 feet of movement total. Action surge dash, get up, run at it. Okay. I'm gonna hit it once. Okay. For a 26. Okay. And then I wanted to make a strength saving throw. DC, it's gonna, don't tell me it yet. I want this to be dramatic. DC 18. I get a 31. <laughs> that was super undramatic. <laughs> but the point is. Sorry, 29. I'm bad at math. 29. I'll get it. I'll get it. Um, Can you even hurt it? Uh, it yeah, the, the attack does no damage to it. Um, I'm going to slide through it. Okay. It doesn't get its opportunity because I've now attacked it mm -hmm. with mobile. And then I'm behind it now and I'm going to attack it twice more. Okay. I'm behind you it. You do have to roll to hit. And remember, you don't get the bonus from Ignatius to the attack roll, because Ignatius's magic is negated in the Oh, I probably missed it then. What did you roll to hit? Uh, uh, With 26 the minus... Three? Uh, th so a, a 23? Would a 23 hit? No. So the first hit wouldn't have hit. Oh. You have to hit at least once to avoid the opportunity attack. Okay. Uh... Does uh, 18? No, 18 does not hit. Huh? Ah, crit. <laughs> okay, the crit does hit it. Um, Gah. Roll, roll damage. Remember that this is. Uh, oh, the crit. Do, it doesn't matter. It's immune to the damage. Uh, so even from behind. Yeah, yeah. It, because it's it, it, the, the shields are an emanating the anti magic field. Mm -hmm. So it's like a radius. Yeah, it's a radius around it. Yeah. Well, the crit happens. The crit happens, so you do hit it, so you don't get hit with the uh, opportunity attack. He ignores opportunity attack whether he hits or not. Oh, he does. With the oh, okay. Feet. Yeah. As long as I make. He only attack. had to attack. Okay, then yeah. great. So then, I attacked. Can I? And so you did point? manage one hit, which we did resolve the maneuver yeah. for. And yeah. then uh, I. <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna try to shove him. Bonus action shove? Bonus action shove. Opposed athletics? Opposed athletics. Do it. I get a 30. I get a 30 as well. <laughs> that was my highest ever. And I roll a 12. I got a 17. Oh, you were supposed to roll that on the 30. Does Indomitable work on this? Or no, it's an no, ability no, check. It's and, I, and I brace myself behind the creature. So I'm we, trying. So we've done no damage, right? Wait, 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 wait. Unless you have adamantium, you you cannot damage it. I... Just fact. Well, unless you have unless you have a way of doing cold damage that isn't magical, lightning damage that isn't magical, uh, um, uh, like unless you can do elemental damage that isn't magical, um. It can't, and it's immune to fire, poison, and psychic. So, and it's immune for, to, to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non-magical attacks that aren't anti-magic. <laughs> <laughs> and it animates some anti-magic fields, so it negates magical attacks um, and spells. It's your turn, Bale. Can I use my reaction to silvery barbs? It's roll. No, because it's anti. It's in an anti-magic field. So it doesn't apply that. To no. The silvery barb. Okay. Um. <laughs> Do I know how it, how it, um, <laughs> can I get a guess on how it sees? How it sees? Yeah, is it? It, like, it has eyes, you can see its eyes. So it's using its eyes to see. It, it appear, uh, well, if you want to study it, uh, you can give me um, a insider perception check. What is this thing? 32? Um, although it has eyes, it is in darkness. Um, because of the way the, the, the light work, works here. <clears throat> um, but it is moving through the, the, the area in a way that this creature might have blind sight. Mm. Mm. 
Okay. Every time I have a plan, you say something that it's so squashes funny. it. It's actually yeah. so funny. <laughs> I'm looking at everything I have, and I just I'm like, oh, here's a really creative solution. It has blind sight. Cool. Yeah. Never mind. Sometimes the secret to cha challenging high-level characters is putting th something in front of them that is immune to everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Man. Um, what do you got, Bam? Okay, so I can run through through it. You can try. <laughs> Guys, I don't think my chances of running through it are very good. I got magic and that's all I got. Is that what we're trying to do though? Get on the other side? I think that's the, the uh, idea. I, yeah, in theory. <laughs> okay. Where's Casper? <laughs> He's hiding. I'm dangling from a bridge in an anti-magic field. <laughs> I'm a weak little man. As long as you <laughs> fall outside the magic field, then you'll be fine. Then you can fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about falling. You're good. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to... Can I apply feel my agility to my climb speed? Sure. Okay. I'm literally gonna just get on the yeah. side of the bridge and <laughs> scurry across. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I can get, uh, and if I dash using my my bonus action. You ever see like a cat climb a fence? Yeah. Or like, or when you see like a cat climb a tree? Yeah. Yeah. How far it's, can you get? It's amazing because you shouldn't be able to walk that way, but you are. You're just like. Give me an... Secondly, 120 feet. Okay, so you're clambering along the side. Yes. Okay, at full speed. So you clamber to the other side of the bridge. Yes. Okay. You dash in feline agility to do that? Or do you have any... What what actions have you used? Uh, essentially, it's my movement, it's my feline agility, and it's my bonus action. Okay. Um, but I do want to... Do you have anything that prevents you from... from spares you from opportunity attacks that isn't magical? when you're doing this. Can you half the speed and take disengage? I guess I, guess I could disengage with my bonus action and use, and I would get 60 feet. And then where would that get me? You could get right close to me. Yeah, because the thing is I want to make sure I, I'm actually don't want to go yeah. too far because I want to stay in range just in case Sebastian falls because my feather falls 60 feet. Yeah, yeah. So as long as I'm within 60 feet of Sebastian, that's where I want to move. So Okay, then if you want to disengage so you don't get an opportunity attack as you go back. And you're like on the here. side? Yeah. Like here. Yeah, I'm like... <laughs> okay. Alrighty, sounds good to me, Vale. Nice, Vale. Sebastian, we're over to you. All right. Oh, oh God, I froze my... <laughs> You roll the persuasion no. check. Right. You persuade it to let so us you're, go. So you're back. holding on to the side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I am also holding on to the side. As gracefully as a cat. Uh, no, I'm like <laughs> I'm like trying to get my footing. I'm dangling. I'm squirming. You know. Okay. Here's here's what I'm gonna do. How far is it to the boiling uh, boiling blood? 120 feet. 120 feet. I'm going to <clears throat> let go. Okay. You immediately start falling. And I'm going to pull out. The immovable rod. <laughs> and once I'm more than 30 feet away from it, I'm going to... Oh. And then I'm going to figure it out, but I'm now out of its reach. <laughs> okay. Do you still have Casper? So you're not going to... Okay. You're way over How much again. upper body strength does Sebastian have? Okay, I was preparing for this, so like, I'm going to maybe... Okay, yeah, not a lot. Okay. Hug it. I, I'm like... Okay, so you're gonna <laughs> and I'm, hug the And I'm probably up. still gonna be like, ah, but okay. it's, I'm gonna like soften it so that I like... Okay. <laughs> Can you fly? Can you, do you have Cause like, like you're not worried no. about your, like, are you gonna do anything to make make sure that, cause the grip of holding onto that thing when it stops. It's your legs. You're just gonna hug the, hug, hug the immovable rod. Ride it, ride it. I, yeah. I, I, I put it under my legs, and then I'm gonna like. You ever see those things with like the skateboarders trying to gr grind on a railing? And I the don't put it in between my up. legs. I put it like under my knees. Yeah. Okay. Make okay. a swing. And I'm gonna like right. hold it with like I'm trying to put tell you what. Just give me an acrobatics check. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it's like, you know, like the tight ropes where they they hold. I on. get an eight. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Okay. <laughs> So you go, trying, guys. you you go to activate the immovable rod. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> basically through this combination of 
when you start it and getting it through be, between your your legs, I, I'm gonna go for like the full skateboarder thing. Like you activate this thing too early, and it is just like jam right in the crotch. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so I'm gonna say that you take uh, you you take um, 18 points of bludgeoning damage, <laughs> and I need a Constitution saving throw. 18 points of Ooh. 12. Okay, you're not stunned. <laughs> <laughs> am I, I am. No, no, no. It, it, it hurts a lot. But you take the damage and you kind of slide off the side, but you're still ho holding on, on onto it. Um, and y y yeah, it, it's the least <laughs> graceful thing we've <laughs> ever seen. Yeah. Uh, you, you just, you, at first you hear silence as I, as I like, and then just slide <laughs> off, and then I'm hanging there, and then finally hear, Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Powerful oh. sorcerer in the world. <laughs> so, oh, my everything, my guts hurt, my insides are where they should. You have a really be. loud cough too. Yeah. Like, oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm just dangling there. You yeah. add a little bit of blood to the blood river. Will you? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm gonna say that 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 is your turn. <laughs> I'm hanging out, guys. But I'm I'm like forty feet away from it. Yeah, hang in there. Okay, the dreadnought. Its shield charge does not recharge, so it's just gonna. It turns around to Paluto with the two shields, and it kind of turns the shields on it on their side. Uh oh. And basically goes for the crunch. Oh! Um, and again, if you have any bonuses from magical armor, do you have any magical bonuses to your armor class? Uh, no. The only thing I have is that because it's adamantium, he can't crit me. Actually, it can because the magical effect of the armor is suppressed in the ma anti magic field. Oh. Okay. So I got so two he, attacks. He can crit me. Yes. Did he crit me? He did not. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I did get a 27 and a 31 to hit. Those both are direct hits. You take 22 bludgeoning damage, seven, uh, um, and then another 14 piercing damage from the spikes on the shield. Ah! <laughs> uh, times two, so it is 44 uh, plus 28. Because both attacks, yeah. Um. So that is 74, 72. God. Yeah. As as basically the two shields come in, slam into your sides and crush you with spikes. It's like being basically thrown inside an Iron Maiden. I'm very metal. hurt. You we uh, run. Um, uh, Go. I'm going to use because he's being a jerk. I'm gonna repost him, but this time I'm gonna punch him in the face. Okay. And I can punch him with my gloves. Yes. And they're made of adamantium. Yes. I punch him. I crit. <gasps> okay. Critical so I give punch. him I give him a crit punch in the Kay. in the I uppercut him. <laughs> dealing twelve damage. <laughs> damage on the board. Baff! <laughs> and then make a strength save. Uh, I do not believe you can apply a maneuver on two maneuvers. Oh. That's fair. Yeah. Fine. You can't. Oh, but wait, it's 12 plus uh, my D10 superiority dice. Which would be doubled for the crit. <gasps> or, well, yeah, which would be added in 10. 18! So Ooh. 18 plus another 10, so... 18 plus uh, 12 in total, so 30 in total. 30 in total, okay. A good hit. Boom! Boxing. I didn't see that coming. I yeah. just figured it out. I, it, it, it didn't either, yeah. Um, all right. Well, with that, we actually go to Pluto's real turn. Um, I'm just gonna start boxing him. <laughs> okay. Do it. Uh, I get a 22 to hit. I miss. Oh my god. It blocks it with his shield. He. Uh, so basically, unless I crit this guy, he's really hard to hit. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, 29. That goes through. And uh, uh, a 23. That does not. His AC is 24. Oh, oh, man. So I get another hit. Strength saved. DC 
18. I get a 21. Oh! Okay, that's okay. Um, and that was for the... So you did get one good hit. One good hit, plus he still takes the damage from the disarming attack, but he just... Um, Oh, trying to disarm him of the shields. Yeah. Nice. Nice play. Uh, but it's not working. Um, so it's going to be, in total, uh, eight damage. So I'm just boxing, boxing, I'm boxing him, and then I'm going to run. All right. Um, you're going to take the opportunity attack? He can't because I'm mobile. Right. Ah! Come get me, punk. Okay. He just might. <laughs> Vale, it's your turn. There's these stones below, right? Yes. I'd like to. Oh, I'm gonna second win too. I'm just gonna do that. Okay. Because I didn't use my bonus action. Will he get yeah, an opportunity attack if I crawl across the bridge? If you do so without disengaging, yes. Um. You know what? Okay. I will disengage. Okay. Using my bonus action. Crawl across. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. And I'm gonna get up. Yep. And. Is this far as I can go? No. I think I can get to here. And then I want to start taking shots against the bridge. Shooting the bridge? Yes. Okay. You said. We had a good idea about how, how how this would go. The pillar is going to be a couple hundred. A section might be about a hundred damage. Like up here? Like I would guess that maybe the weakest point you're probably looking at. But I mean like, I don't know how much your damage from your arrows will do. Yeah, the uh, you do. a stone construction like this, it's also worth noting that stone constructions are typically immune to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage from non-magical weapons. You're using magical weapons, mm -hmm. but the anti-magic field is also protecting it. But can I shoot far, like 30 feet out from To him? get the, the pillar? Yeah. I don't think you got the angle for that shot from where you're standing. Okay. Yeah. What about, what about, remember those vials of all that goo and stuff that we found in- Does Veo have any of that? I believe she stole a bunch. Oh, that's Rudy. Is that Rudy? Mm -hmm. I got a vial of goo, but I'm just hanging out here. Or, um, like, okay, I guess I'm like, this is, this is 30 feet out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're you're just on the edge, on the edge of the, the anti-magic field from where you're standing right now. Because the field extends out. Just that far. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. It's gonna change when I was looking. And if I shoot through him and it comes out on the other side, it still is magical on the other side of the anti mat. Yeah. Yeah. If you shoot through through him, but yeah. from where he's standing, basically the entire top of the bridge is enveloped in the anti magic field right now. Yeah. Okay. Um. So then instead of moving that far, if I go to the edge here, mm -hmm. could I reach it? To shoot the pillar. To shoot, yeah. Just all I'm looking for is like something outside of his range. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that may puts you in, in yeah, if you if you want to start shooting the the base plate of uh, of it. Yeah. You're talking about needing to deal several hundred points of damage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can deal so. <laughs> if you think you can, go for it. I, I'm, I'm working on just surviving. Yeah. Okay. Once I get over there, I don't plan. <clears throat> I don't I'm not, I'm not in a fight in headspace with this. It has an anti-magic field. I don't know what I'm capable of right now, but it ain't much. Yeah, I guess at this point, you know what? I'm just going to dash then with okay. my action and get out of there and move. Cool. Cool. Sebastian, where were you? So, does the carpet of flying require attunement? No. 
We never really established this, but if I whistle for Casper. Okay, if I yell Casper and Who's who has Casper right now? You put it I in tucked Pluto. it in Pluto's back pocket. Okay. Okay. So you whisper for Casper. Whistle. You I'll whistle whisper. for Casper. The carpet flies out from Pluto, hits the anti-magic field, and becomes a carpet on the ground. That's not how physics work. <laughs> it would fly, it would hit the anti-magic field, soar through it <laughs> from momentum, and then when it hits the other side, it would be like, okay, you know when a plane like loses okay, its jet and it starts right. falling? I'll entertain and then this. It's... Roll me a d6. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For the love of God, thank, thank you. Thank you. how physics works in a Four. world. Four. Okay. No, I'm bringing physics into it because I want him to hit the anti-magic field with momentum. So okay. like he's like a jet who loses its engine and so goes... So you've argued for momentum. Yeah. Yeah. So the carpet hits the anti-magic field, falls off the bridge due to momentum, and starts falling because it's, anti it's no longer a magical carpet. It starts falling here straight down towards the lava. Until mm -hmm. it hits 30 feet away. In which case it wakes up again Realizing what's ha what's happening, uh, just to just in time to stop itself before the bottom of the lava. All right, good. Now, now, <laughs> now, now, come here. Now come here, Casper. Come. Are you scared? Why are you scared again? <laughs> we we got this. Okay. How's Casper doing? Casper's quivering in fear. Don't don't look down. <laughs> Buddy? You, just, you just hear Casper go, blood stains do not come out of carpet. Then we're not going to touch the blood. <laughs> Don't touch it. Don't touch you're it. You're going to come over here and you're going to help help Sebastian out. I'm going to try to like talk the carpet All right. into, into helping me. Uh, give me a persuasion check. Okay. I'm going to use a sorcery point. <laughs> okay. To get a 26. All right, I'll come get you. I don't know what happened up there. I think I it felt like I winked out of existence. Like I just suddenly stopped being. Yeah. I don't want to not exist. The emptiness was horrible. Does he have eyes? No, it's a carpet. I was just thinking like imagine like all those like features just disappear and then they reappear for a moment. Listen, buddy. It's going to get worse before it gets better cuz we're going to have to get back in there somehow. But for now, don't worry about that. Just come come get me. Okay. Alrighty, we go to the top of the turn. I'm working on this. I'm anything living. else? I mean, if, if... Bonus action, action, anything you want to do. I'm not in darkness or dim light, am I? No, you're, you are in, in, you're illuminated. Um, then, <clears throat> do I have any other bonus actions? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. The... <sighs> It's shield charge recharged, but I don't need to use it. So you sensed a readiness of this juggernaut, of, of the of the dreadnought, that that initial charge that it did, the energy that it had to do that again is back. Mm, okay. But instead, what it does is it clinks the shield, and you you hear this like mechanical noise in inside it, as you realize that the spikes embedded on the shield can be shot. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh no! Um, and so it clinks the, 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 spi the spikes out and basically just a choo 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 all coming towards Paluto. <laughs> now you're no longer in the anti-magic field. Um, so yeah, Paluto you get shot twice with the, uh, with, with the spikes. Uh, I get a 20 and a 16 to hit. Uh, I'm gonna cast shield. Okay. Because, and that's gonna negate the- 20. So the, yeah, so the shield just comes up. Out of my ring of spell storing, which activated again. Oh, and then I it's gonna go, works. junk, 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 junk. Oh no. Guys. Negating my shield. <laughs> I can't go in if it's blocking. You don't want to come in. No, I do. That's where we're trying to go. Wherever you are is much safer than where I am right I now. Don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> Destroy the bridge. <laughs> so, Veo and Paluto, you are currently in another chamber oh. where you can see that there are two doorways that lead out of this chamber. One is fully collapsed and caved in. Oh. 
The, uh, in this room is a grand statue of one of the sorcerer queens of old, which um, neither of you are um, proficient in history to know, but what you notice in this room upon the statue, the sorcerer queen depicted here, um, her imperious presence and the power around her, you can see the the that her statue shows a woman with both tiefling and dragonborn features. So she is both simultaneously has like the the human face, but like these dragon like these majestic wings stretching from her, dragon like claws, and is is almost basking in this power. But you can't help feeling that the room that you are in is uncannily like the inscrutable tower in its design. Um, it has the uh, obsidian features and stonework that are in, it, it's like, are we in the tower? Except it bear, instead of the bearing of the Amethyst Academy, the iconography of the Sorcerer Queen is set before you. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's quite lovely, actually. Um, yeah. And then there is another set of doors right here in that kind of glass and obsidian construction that appear to be intact. I have a big idea, but I don't know whose turn it is. The only thing that I will mention oh. is that the creature, the guardian, is far too large to go through either sets of doors. Oh. Come on in, Sebastian. Come just on, get in. Just come on in. Get you need door. to move it out of that entrance way so I can fly in. Okay. Okay. I'm so with that, we go to Pluto. I am going to remove my gauntlets, mm -hmm. and I'm going to throw them to Veo. What? And I punch it with an arrow. Like shoot the gauntlets at its head, and then I'm gonna run and kick it. <laughs> <laughs> do it, just do it, Vao. Don't think about it, just do it. Okay. And I run and I just try it. I like do like my best version of a jumping kick. <laughs> a flying jump ah! kick. All right, give me an attack roll, bud. <laughs> ah! uh, I get a twenty-three. Oh. Deflected off the shield. Uh, um, <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. Um, <laughs> Just kicking. This. I, I almost imagine it's like a child kicking someone in the shins. <laughs> you just saw <laughs> you. The I'm like kicking it. I'm going to get you. Um, I'm going to use Lucky to get another 23 and uh, a 24. And it hits. Ah! <laughs> and um, uh, <laughs> I'm going to use um, Distracting Strike. Okay. So it's going to take, it's going to take 12 damage from okay. my kick. I go, I hoof it in like the shin. Okay. And uh, the next creature has advantage on its attack roll against it. Okay. Do it, Bayo. <laughs> Kill it. And then I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna like taunt it this way. Okay. Come on. Come and get me. Alrighty, Veo, it is your turn. I guess I. Strap Actually, wait. Oh. Can I stay with it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm you can stay, stay with there. It. I gotta stay with it because I want Veo to get all the. Yeah. So I get advantage from Pluto. I'm also gonna say though you get disadvantage because you're shooting a gauntlet. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. But like, so they negate each other. Make it yeah. into a fist and just like, yeah. yeah. But it's kind of rattly on there. Yeah. Like, God. Um, give me an intelligence check. I mean, eighteen plus. Okay. Zero. You realize that actually. Rather than shooting, you, he threw you his gauntlets, and gauntlets are sectioned, yeah. right? And they're plated in, in pieces. You realize that instead of shooting the entire gauntlet, if you were to very quickly dismantle the fingers 
the finger pieces of the gauntlet, yeah. you could make not terrible arrowheads. Mm. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say that it's an action that to like jury rig this. Um, I'm gonna have you make you make a thievery check. It's gonna take an action, and your check result will determine how many arrows you're able to f- to quickly fashion in this like a way. Of hand? Yeah, I'd accept sleight of hand. I would accept thieves' tools. I would accept if you're proficient in any kind of artisan's tools. I would accept that as well. Yeah, thieves' tools, sleight of hand. I think. Sleight of hand, then? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll 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 accept that. Uh, so twenty six. Okay, that's a great result. Okay, so in that case, what I'm gonna have you do? My fingernail and I rip them apart. It is. Um, is um, I, all the I was gonna say it started every every. So you got twenty six. Mm-hmm. So you beat. I, I wanted to see at least a ten. You beat a fifteen. You beat a twenty. So you've got like three degrees of success on on, on this one. Uh-huh. So what I'm gonna have you do? Is roll me, um, roll me three d four, and that's how many arrows you're able to quickly fashion in this way. But it's going to take your whole turn to do this. Yeah, I will do that. <laughs> nine. Nine. Okay, you're able to make nine makeshift adamantine arrows. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yes, I'll take that. Um, and then I guess I'm just gonna shift behind this pillar mm-hmm. so I don't get struck with shield bullets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, can I hide using my 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 uh, cutting action? I'm gonna say no, say because hands. the the amount of work that you need to do on your turn to make these arrows, yeah. it, it just, like you're able to crouch down there, but it, it's, it, okay. it, 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 just while you're working, it's it's yeah. not enough. I essentially yeah. take it, yeah, I'm like, thank you Pluto, and I crouch behind this pillar and I'm just like yeah. working on it. Yeah. And I get nine. Yeah. Bulletproof. All right, <laughs> Sebastian, it's your turn. High five. Am I on Casper now? Uh, Casper, Casper spends its action, so it had to fly up, so it flies up to you. And that that can, uh, it has a movement of eighty feet. Okay, so it's eighty. Yeah, so it it, it it's, yeah. So, so it, yeah. Here's here's what I want to happen. I rise up on Casper, <laughs> back into view. It. I'm imagining though that there's no opening here, and I don't have the movement to get there. With where it, it's basically closed the door. Yeah. Okay. Because its shields fill the entire doorway. You guys if you could see through him, which you can't, but just for for cinematic purposes. So I rise up on this floating carpet and I'm shuffling a deck of cards. And I'm like doing cool shuffling with it. And then I take one of the cards and I toss it onto the bridge right here. This is my deck of illusions. Okay. Um, Should we roll or do you have a deck of cards? Or do we want me to roll like just a... How many possibilities are there? Is it actually? It's a full a deck? deck of cards. It's a full deck of cards. Okay, uh, we can do one shuffle deck. It looks like, like it stops at eight. I have like a oh. like eight of diamonds. Oh, two of diamonds. Oh, card. Oh. There you two go. Of hearts. So. So a little <laughs> goblin appears right here and just starts. <laughs> And then I'm just gonna like the most powerful sorcerer in the world. <laughs> and I, 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 I sh- I'm shuffling this deck, and I toss a card, and a little goblin pops up, and I'm like, oh, that'll do. And I'm gonna like try to back up, and the goblin is just there to try to taunt the okay. the giant monster into turning around and looking at it. Okay. The giant monster. <laughs> Um, it's ability recharge, but it's really not, uh, doesn't doesn't need to use it. It's just going to push the attack on Pluto. Oh. Oh. My goblin! No. I kick it in the shin, and then it... Uh, it gets a 15 and a 30 to hit. Uh, the 15 misses. <laughs> okay, the 30, I assume, hits. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is going to be um, 22 bludgeoning and 14 piercing. Ah! <laughs> I kick it in the shin and it just slams. <laughs> yeah, <around>. just, 
you kick it, and then it just cu- br- brings its foot foot back up and just kicks you <laughs> back. <laughs> no, it, sl- it slams you with a shield again. Yep. It would have been way more impressive if it was a dragon. I'm sorry. It's, it's not distracting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I like throw the card with such confidence, thinking a dragon or something cool, and it's. <laughs> no, sorry, dude. Um, Pluto, it is your turn. Uh, I press the attack. And <laughs> you keep kicking back? Keep kicking, baby. I jump and I try to kick him in the knee this time. You're gonna kick it old school? Um, I'm missing. <laughs> I miss. And I miss! <laughs> I. Ow! Had enough yet? <laughs> and then I'm going to run ba- past the pillar. Okay. Towards the. Uh... Veo, now! <laughs> Alrighty. Veo, it's your turn. Alright, I step out and I brandish these. Random arrows. Um, and I'm gonna. U- I'm out of the range, I guess, right? Yeah, you are out of the range. Okay, of the range. then I'm going just barely, actually. To cast Zephyr Strike as a bonus action. Okay. And at least get advantage on one of these shots. Let's need it to hit. Oh, you lost the advantage though on that I was giving you too, though. No, no, it's, yeah, it's ever striking advantage. Okay, okay. Twenty-two to hit. It's so. hard. It's hard to hit. Twenty-five to hit. That gets it. You don't have any way of turning on sneak attack while there. I, no, I had to get it on the advantage uh, yeah. one. Okay, but I get an extra D8 at least. And then does this, because it's adamantine, it just does regular damage? Does regular damage, okay. yeah. Uh, yes. And I guess that the extra damage from Zephyr Strike will apply. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Punch it. Okay. You poke it in the eye. With 31 him. damage. Alrighty. Nice. At this point, it does appear that it is bloodied, um, but We're doing it, is, it! it is still kicking. It is still kicking. <laughs> I'll kick it to death, Sebastian. We will come back around to you. My goblin's working real hard. Um, I casting spells at this thing is not going to do anything, correct? Unless you have some way to indirectly affect it with magic. So, drop something on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna continue having my goblin try to taunt it. Okay. But I'm gonna. Uh, you can say no to this. I have mold earth. Now it says that I can target loose earth, which I know this bridge is not. Correct. Can I try chip? Can I use mold earth to try to chip away at the bridge and weaken it? No. No. It, okay. th- that's beyond the power for a cantrip. That's fair. If you had another spell that could affect the bridge. Of a higher level, I would would accept that, but uh, but yeah, no. Mold Earth as a cantrip is not strong enough to to affect the. Bridge Very the fair. Cantrip. Just thought I'd ask. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna fly over and start hucking rocks at it, really trying to get it to pay attention to the goblin. Okay, give me an intimidation or uh, an intimidation check. Nope. That's gonna be a 19. As you huck rocks at it, there's a tink, 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 and you just hear the creaking of the metal as it turns back around towards you. How high in the air are you? I'm like, well, I flew, I would have flown, like I'm probably like 80 feet up. So I'm hoping it just sees the goblin. Okay. I'm also having the goblin like stand there, like jumping up and sure, down, sure. screaming. Okay. It's its turn. It turns around and it uses its shield charge to charge the goblin. And as it gets there, the goblin winks out of existence <laughs> because it's an illusion, and it's thus winked out by by the anti anti magic field. And you are flying over t- over top of it. That's the opening I needed. There it is. Okay, Pluto, it's your turn. I run to the edge, and I'm gonna try to coax uh, Sebastian in. Okay. Now, Sebastian. Vale. Now. Uh. 
Yeah, I'm gonna, I guess, start hitting it. Yeah, Just try to, yeah. try to, try to get it. All right, um, go for it. Ollie. Seventeen, and less than that. So no, no hits. Just Sebastian. <laughs> I grab the edges of Casper and I, I lean down and I whisper, do you trust me? And then I, I zoom past, avoiding the anti-magic field, anti -magic okay. field and zoom To make in. sure that you can, give me an acrobatics check. That's fair. Because you're kind of eyeballing it. 15. All right, you manage, there's a moment where you're like, oh, currents, um, and you manage to zip through past Pluto and and s s sweep in, in into the room. Wait. You're effectively Wait. dashing, I guess. Yeah. yeah? So I, I, I like f fly into the room, pull the carpet out and like slide onto the floor. And I'm like, let's go. <laughs> I, roll, <laughs> I roll them up as we go. Oh no. Uh oh. Ah! Comes back towards Pluto and attacks with its shields. Oh. Pluto. Uh, getting a 17 and a 22. The 22 hits. Another 20, uh, basically another 38 damage. Ow. As it charges back towards you and batters you with the shield. It's your turn, Blue. I kick it. I get in whatever. And then I run away. <laughs> <laughs> I jump up and I, I kick off of it and I just, Ah, parkour. <laughs> Are you guys going to, going to flee through the doors? Run away! Yeah, 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 yeah. You crash through the doors. The creature behind you. It stops at the doors, and as you run down the hallway, you can't fe escape the feeling like this is a very, very, very long hall. And that's where we'll end for the night. <gasps> we run for twenty minutes. At 28 minutes, I go. No, you gotta listen to me. This is this is too long for a hallway. Oh my god! I have nine health. Yeah. <laughs> and, and no gloves. Yeah. No gloves. No gloves. No. I well, how did you guys feel about that one? one? You 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 made me the fingerless. You you made me fingerless gauntlets. I imagine that they're like, <laughs> you know, those gloves that have the finger holes in them. Yeah. That's what I have now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Texting gloves. Yeah. The first ever. Yeah. Uh, how do you guys feel? I, I've wanted to use an iron golem in an anti-magic field for a long time. That's amazing. And I'm not unhappy with Completely the results. Completely crippling. I think at one point we were all staring at our, our kids and going, what do we do? The only <laughs> way out that do? I had was borrowing your magic item. And throwing yourself off of yeah. the... Yeah. <laughs> I, I broke my arms with a, a movable rod and... Um, Oh, what point I was like, you could oh, stand enough back to like do a fireball against the bridge or something. We can yeah. make it fall in. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. You know, though it, it shows it's not an insurmountable. It's not insurmountable. I was going to punch my way out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like taking the armor apart to try to damage it. Yeah. God, that was good. God, God. Yeah. I love that you went fisticuffs with an iron golem. Yeah. <laughs> that, that felt really cool. Like Pluto Jackson. Stories for the ages. Right. I hear no bell. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, a big thank you to our amazing cast, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, for playing tonight. And a huge thank yeah. you to Kyle for all of his amazing work behind the scenes. Thanks. And encouragement. And encouragement. Uh, and a huge thank you to huge our dungeon master, you. Monty Martin. Hilarious. Uh, for throwing a anti-magic The hardest ball. monster we've ever fought. Yeah. <laughs> That's legitimately the hardest. That was good. <laughs> My brain was like mush at the end. <laughs> and I was so frustrated with how many 13s I rolled with a plus 10. Oh. I can't tell you how many 9s, 11s, 13s. It was like, normally I would just be like, hit, 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 hit. But with just with just the fists, it was just not enough. Yeah. Yep. Um, in our game tonight, we got to use some amazing assets produced by talented artists. They have graciously given us permission to use them in our tabletop games. We encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. Where is the uh, Iron Golem from? That is one of the whiz kids. It's actually a fire dry giant dreadnought, but I thought using it as a giant Iron Golem with shields yeah. was perfect oh, yeah. for, for this encounter. It's amazing. I yeah. mean, this wonderful terrain by Dwarven Forge, um, the Her uh, Hero Forge miniatures, whiz kids miniatures, music by Tabletop Audio, uh, player character artwork by Elizabeth Pro. And the wonderful helmet by the lovely Jonathan Douglas at uh, A Geek in the Making. I believe it's A Geek in the Making. Um, so go check them out on Instagram. 
Nice. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for Teespring store. We can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our next project is coming to Kickstarter this spring. Monsters of Drakenheim featuring Pluto Jackson's Monster Slaying Guide. Um, a tome with hundreds, like between 150, 200, depending on stretch rules, wow. new monsters for 5th edition based on our adventures in the world of Drakenheim. We will be having some old favorites reimagined, some new incarnations and variants on some of the most popular monsters from the world of Drakenheim. Monsters that you have seen in the show that have not received game statistics before in published form. We'll be sharing those with you. Some of my favorites are all the apothecary monsters that we had from earlier this, yes. the, the, this season. Yes. Bunch of the inhabitants, of, more inhabitants of the space between worlds, and more trolls than you can shake a sword at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a whole section on trolls. I think we're also going to be exploring even further with new monsters into like the space between worlds, the horrors of Drakenheim, yep. ratlings. There's going to be there's going to be a lot of new monsters to help flesh out your Drakenheim games. Yeah. Old favorites and new fiends. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, and of course, um, you can follow the links down below to uh, follow the Kickstarter page and uh, get on our Launch Boom page where you can find all the details and previews for the campaign as we roll up to the launch of the Kickstarter. In addition to the book, we're going to be making lots of cool things more miniatures uh and very shortly as well we will uh, we're, we've got a couple more episodes before we're going to take a bit of a diversion to do a special uh with some campfire tales by pluto jackson uh to preview some more of the monsters and creatures from the book so stay tuned for all that of course if you're excited about all this and want to join our community you can also get on our patreon page by following the links in the description below a big thank you to all of our, of our patreon supporters we couldn't do this without you you can also uh, join our Discord community exclusive for our patrons where we're talking about the new book, the old books, all the books, the game, uh, D&D in general, and anything else that you feel like chatting with us about. So join us on Discord. Thank you so much for watching, and you, we will see you next time in Drakenheim. <laughs> <laughs>